Although apparently made of a single part, the tyre is a complex assembly of many components. It is made with over 200 raw materials. It all starts with preparation of the basic components. This is made up of four types of material, rubber or elastomers, reinforcing fillers, plasticizers and chemical additives. The rubber or elastomer is either natural, produced from cultivation of the rubber tree, or synthetic, made out of oil. These raw materials, turned into bales, are then shredded to facilitate the preparation of the rubber compounds. Carbon black and silica reinforcing fillers are added to these elastomers, giving the rubber its wear resistance. Various plasticizers, such as oils or resins, help to make the compounds uniform and facilitate extrusion. Other ingredients come in powder or granule form. These are the chemical additives. And the added amount is an extremely complex operation on an industrial scale. Formulation must be accurate every time. These additives include sulphur. We will see later on that it plays an essential role in the mechanical properties of the rubber compound. All these ingredients are carefully mixed to perfection. The way the various ingredients are mixed and cured is as important for the performance of a tyre as the choice and quantities of the materials used. The amount of each compound is carefully measured to meet requirements in terms of flexibility, resistance, grip, etc. The rubber compound produced is identity marked to ensure full traceability. It is then conditioned for subsequent transformation. The tyre is also made up of long textile cords, aramid, polyester, nylon, etc. to withstand the significant stresses to which it is subject, the first being inflation. Once these various components have been prepared, they will be transformed into a multitude of elements, flat products, shaped bead fillers, textile wires, etc. Production starts on the drum, a rotating cylinder with edges that can be brought together and the centre that inflates. We will see why. The first element to be placed on the drum is a thin, airtight sheet of synthetic rubber which acts as the inner tube. Next, a ply of rubber-coated textile cord is added. Extruded rubber bead fillers are installed on either side to accommodate the bead wire. Metal hoops are used to clamp the tyre firmly against the wheel rim. A second ply is put into position in conjunction with the previous ply. They constitute the radial carcass of the tyre. The first ply is folded down onto the beads to anchor it firmly. Two extruded profiles of resistant and flexible rubber are added. They will form the sidewalls to protect the carcass from side impact. The centre of the drum is inflated to bring the two edges together and give the tyre its normal shape. A fabric ply is then laid down forming a belt that goes round the tyre in the direction of rotation. It will prevent deformation caused by centrifugal force at high speed. Lastly, an extruded profile is placed. This will form the tread or the part in contact with the road surface. The first stage of the tyre's construction is now complete. It can be transported to the curing mould. A large bag filled with pressurised hot fluid in the centre of the mould pushes the still malleable substance to flow into all the cavities of the tread pattern engraved inside the mould. The heat of the fluid around the mould starts the curing process. The increase in temperature causes the sulphur contained in the rubber compounds to bond with the rubber molecules. This process is called vulcanisation. The rubber is then transformed from a plastic to an elastic state. When ejected from the mould and after cooling, the tyre has taken its final shape and properties. Michelin, a better way forward.